Hello and welcome to this introduction to M Plus hosted by the SAM Lab. My name is Brittany Wheeler and today we're going to go through a little bit about what is M Plus, what you need to run code in M Plus, how to import your data from SPSS, and we're going to walk through some examples such as descriptives, linear regression, mediation, and factor analysis. So what is M Plus and why would I need it? M Plus was developed and managed by Dr. Muthin and Muthin. Um, it was first released back in 1998 and it is currently in its eighth version. M Plus is viewed as one of the most comprehensive statistical modeling programs and it is primarily used for its ability to handle multiple types of variables in data. For example, it can handle categorical and continuous variables, longitudinal and multi-level data. However, its data management capabilities are quite limited, so it's often used with another program. For example, cl cleaning and performing descriptive analyses in SPSS, and then the data is transferred to M plus for more advanced analyses. Compared to other similar programs like EQS and Listrel, M plus is very flexible, allowing you to test many different variations of models. Popular analyses performed using M plus are factor analysis, path analysis, and structural equation modeling, since M plus can model latent variables. One of the downsides of the program is that it's quite expensive, ranging from $200 to $600, depending on whether you're a student or not. However, it is located on the computers in the SAM lab, so you can use it there. This is what M plus looks like. Uh, to run any code in M plus, all you need is an input file and your data file. An input file is where you will type out your code, um, and these files end in .int. When you run the code, M plus will save and create an output file for every input file, and these files name in .out. A nice feature of these types of files is that the output can be open using a notepad or text program, allowing you to send it to other lab members or researchers who might not have access to the particular program. So what do you need to run code in M plus? So there are several key components that you need to run M plus code. The first two components are the title and the data. The title is not specifically necessary, but it can be helpful when you look at the code later on to understand what analysis you ran in the particular input file. The data command, however, is required. It is a command that tells M plus where the file data file is located on your computer. As a note, these commands are not case sensitive, so they can be in upper and lower case. So throughout the workshop, you might see the code sometimes in lowercase or uppercase, but they are still all doing the same thing. All of these statements end in a semicolon. Uh, this is a way for M plus to know that you are done with the current command and ready to move on to the next. The next set of commands are the variable command. It is a required command which contains several functions, such as names are, missing R, and use variables. Names R tells the program what the variables in your data set are. You want to list them in the same order that they are located in your data set. M plus typically likes variable names that are less than eight characters long. However, it can handle variables with longer uh, variable names. It will just shorten them for you. The data that you get from SPSS is in free format. So you have to specify a particular value for missing, and they can't be blanks. So missing R all function is telling R what the program, what the value for the missing is in your data. Use variables is telling the program which variables you want to use. If you don't include this function, M plus will try to use all of these variables in your model. During this section, you can also specify which variables are considered categorical and which ones are nominal using categorical R or nominal R. Again, all of these statements end with a semicolon. The next command is the model command, and this is where you state 
which variables influence other variables. Basically, this is where you're building your theoretical model. Dependent variables are written before the independent variables and are usually separated with on, by, or with. On is used to define regression relationships. So in this example on the right, we have right on female. So in this case, gender is predicting writing ability. By is used to indicate indicators of latent factors. So in this example, we have STEM by math and science. So math and science are indicator, indicators of STEM ability. Lastly, with is used to represent correlated relationships or correlated variables. So in this example, we have read with write. So reading and writing ability are correlated. This code doesn't make theoretical sense, but this is an example of what, you, what it would look like when you write your own code. So these next bits of code are not required, but are generally added. So the defined command will allow you to transform or manipulate variables. However, variables that are generated here must also be included in your variable command. As an example of things you can do with this command, we are creating an average score of all academic grades, a sum score of these grades, and we can also standardize variables in this command. The analysis command allows you to specify options for your analyses, such as estimation methods, rotation methods for factor analysis, and you can also request bootstrapping. You also need this command for running descriptive statistics, which we will go over a little bit later. The output command allows you to specify options for your output, such as standardized results, sample statistics, and confidence intervals. This is also where you would request modifi modification indices for your model as well. The explanation mark can be used to comment out code. Um, lines that have an explanation mark uh, before them do not have to end in a semicolon. And this is just telling M plus to not run the code for that specific line. There are a lot of different options that you can include um, in your M plus code. These are just some that you might consider the most useful as you're getting started with M plus. Some additional notes with your code is that all commands must begin on a new line. So you can't have your data or your title on the same line. Lines of code cannot be more than 90 characters long. If you have code that gets really long or say uh, your data file has a really long file location, you can split up your lines and M plus will only recognize the end of your code once you have a semicolon. Unlike R or Stata, M plus will also run all of the code in your input file, so you cannot run specific segments of code. M plus will also force you to save all of your input code before running. So be careful when you're making model modifications so you, that you don't override your previous analyses. You can also use the diagrammer to write code. It'll only write part of the code for you, so you still need to know the key components that you would want to include. Also, what's nice about M plus code is that it generally all follows the same format. So once you kind of get the basics down, you can perform any kind of analysis in M plus once you get those core key components of the code. So how would you get your data from SPSS into M plus? There are six steps to importing your data in M plus. The first is to run descriptives in SPSS. Doing this can provide a baseline so that you can double check that everything was transferred correctly. Step two is you wanna remove or convert all non-numeric variables. M plus cannot read character data. And so it will not run if you have these types of variables such as free responses in your data set. I recommend doing this on a copy of your data set just to make sure you're not accidentally removing or deleting any important data. Step three, not necessarily required as M plus will still accept longer variable names, but shortening, shortening your variable names 
um, will be beneficial in the long run since M plus will shorten them for you. Step four is to deal with your missing in SPSS. One way you can do that is to open a new syntax window using the recode command. You can recode all, var all variables you have to change system missing into a number such as 999, and then everything else you want M uh, SPSS to stay the same. So this is a quick and easy code to just change all the system missing into a particular value. Uh, you can choose any value for your missing, but you do want it to be something that a participant could not have chosen. Step five is you want to export your data into a CSV file. So under file, going to export and CSV, you want to make sure you unselect write variable names to file because M plus does not like words. Um, it's also important to remember the order that these variables are in so that when you tell M plus um, what your variables are, they're all in the correct order. And this will export all of your variables into a CSV file. If you would like to choose only specific variables, um, you can hit the little variable option next to save, and that will allow you to select specific variables you want to include. Lastly, you want to double check that your data was run in correctly by running descriptives in M+. So just like the previous sections of code, we have the title, data, and variable commands. To get descriptives, we just type the analysis command, type equals basic, and that will provide descriptives for all of the variables in our data set. And we'll, we'll go into a bit more detail with the examples. I wanna shout out a special thanks to UCLA Institute for Digital Research and Education Statistical Consulting. I got most of the data for the seminar from their website. So now we're going to move over into M plus and walk through some examples. When you first open M plus, you'll see something like this. M plus will open up a blank input file where you can start writing your code. Because I have all of the input code already written, we're going to switch files. So here we have a uh, input file for performing descriptives without missing. In our file, our data is hsb.dat, and this is considered an M plus data file. Um, you can also see here that I didn't specify the full location, and this is because my input file and my data file are located within the same folder, so M plus already knows where to look for the data. If they happen to be in different locations, you would have to specify that full file location. In our variable command, we have our variables listed out. And you can see here that I have them listed out horizontally. Um, this is fine. You can listen out horizontally or vertically. Um, the only thing is you don't want to go more than 90 characters per line. Our analysis type is basic, and so this is what's telling M plus that we are going to want uh, descriptive statistics. And we've also included plots here. So uh, plot type one is going to ask for descriptive plots of the data. Plot two would be asking for something like estimated means and probabilities, while plot three would look at outliers. So to run this code, we just go up to the top to the little red run button. When you click that, M plus will open up an output file for you. So the beginning part of this output will be just a reiteration of the code that we use to run the analyses. It'll tell us how many participants we had and then the number of variables. And then if we scroll a little bit further down, we'll have our means, covariances, correlations. And then all the way down at the bottom, we'll have our means, skewness and kurtosis, min and max, and then our percentiles. 
as you can see here, M plus does not provide the plots in this output file. To get to those plots, up at the top, there is this little line graph button next to the run button. You click that, and it'll open up a window asking which plots we want to look at. In this case, we want to look at histograms first. And so it's going to ask us which variable we want to look at. And we can look at reading ability. And then you just hit OK, and then it'll uh, create a histogram for you. And then up at the top, there are little bar graphs with um, arrows. You just click those, and they allow you to cycle through all of the variables in your data set. It's the same process if you want to switch to look at scatter plots. You just click the little line graph, select scatter plots, uh, select the variables that you want. So we're going to pick reading and writing ability, and it will provide the scatter plot for you. And just with histograms, there are little scatter plots with arrows at the top that allow you to cycle through uh, the variables. So that's how you would run descriptives uh, without missing in M+. What happened? What would you do if your data had missing? So we're going to go through an example of that. So here we have our example with missing data. As you can see, it looks quite similar. Here we have listwise on commented out. So if um, we uncommented out this code, it would remove anybody with missing, but we want to look at that. So that's why it's commented out. So the one bit of code that's different from the last um, input file is just this missing all, or all um, statement here. So this is just telling M plus that any missing in our data is categorized by negative 9999. And then our analysis type is basic because we do want that, those descriptive statistics. So we go up to run again. It'll open up a new output file. All the information at the top will be the same as the previous um, input file, output file, but it will provide us with missing data patterns. So pattern one in this case would be full, um, no missing. So we have 138 participants who aren't missing anything. We have five participants who are missing social studies and so on. So that's how you would read um, these missing data patterns for your data. And then like before, you'll have your, uh, your means, covariances, and then all the way down, you'll have your sample statistics um, down here at the bottom. So that's the, how you would run descriptives if you happen to have missing data. So let's move on to running linear regression. So this is our input file for our linear regression example. The title, data, and variable, name, variable statements would be very similar to what we have been using. However, in our use variable command, we are only specifying three variables that we'll be, we will be including in our linear regression. In this case, female, write, and read. Also in this bit of common out code here, um, if you have an older version of M+, it won't provide the intercept for you. Um, so to get this, you type analysis, type is mean structure, and this will uh, provide the intercept for you. Because we are doing a linear regression model, in our model statement, we have write on female read. So this is female and reading ability predicting writing ability. So we're just gonna go up to the run button to run this, and it will provide us with an output. The first part of this output will be just a reiteration of the code used to run it. Underneath, it'll say input reading terminated normally, which is what you want to see. It's just M plus telling you that it didn't run into any issues. Below that, we have our summary of the analyses telling us how many participants we had, our number of IVs and DVs. And then it'll tell you about any missing data if we had it, some univariate statistics, 
And then below that, we have a test of the model fit information. So because our current model um, in OLS regression is saturated, the chi-squared, the RMSEA, and the CFI will be either zero or one. However, what you wanna look at is the chi-squared test of model fit for the baseline model. So what this is testing is basically our overall regression model um, for this analysis. Um, it's not specified as cleanly as it is in SPSS, um, but this is the test of the overall model. When you scroll down a little bit more, you'll have your individual coefficients for your regression model, and you would interpret these the same way as you would for um, as you would in SPSS. So that's how you would perform linear regression in. Um, M plus. We're going to take this a little step further and we're going to show you how to do mediation. So our next example is one of mediation. So as before, we have our title, data, and variables. In this case, the variables that we're going to be using in this example are liking, reappraisal, and protest with protest being our IV, reappraisal being our mediator, and liking being our DB. So in our model, we have liking on reappraisal and protest, and this is gonna give us our B1 and C prime pathway. And then second, we have our reappraisal on protest, which is gonna give us our A1 pathway. M plus also has the model indirect function, which is going to give us um, the indirect pathways between our IV and our DV. So in this case, we have liking, indirect, protest. If you have multiple mediators, something like serial mediation, it would test every potential pathway between your IV and your DV. So it'll capture all of those indirect pathways. For analysis, we are requesting 10,000 bootstrap samples here. And then for the output, we are requesting sample statistics confidence intervals, and standardized output. So we're going to run this, and it will open up this window with telling you how many times it's drawing your sample. This, the speed of this kind of depends on the speed of your computer and the number of samples that you're requesting, but you can't really do anything else while that is running. Okay, so here we have just a radiation of the code that we used input uh, reading terminated normally, which means there were no issues. We have our summary of the analyses, number how many observations, how many IVs and DVs we had. We have sample statistics for our sample, univariate statistics, model fit information. Right below that, we have test of the model results. So. The way M plus will provide your uh, output is first, it's going to provide you the unstandardized output. And below that, it's going to provide the standardized output. And it will follow this format for the rest of the options that we included. So it's going to provide the unstandardized total, total indirect and specific indirect effects before providing the standardized version of those uh, same values. Same thing with the confidence intervals we, we uh, requested the unstandardized, the standardized, and then the confidence intervals for our indirect effect. And so on. Okay. So our last example for today is the factor analysis. So here is our input file for factor analysis. As before, we have our title, data, and variable functions. However, in our use various statement rather than type out every single item that we wanted to include we are telling M plus that we want items 13 through 24 and it's useful to kind of save yourself some space in your code so it's going to include every variable between those two um, variables that you listed in our analysis command we are specifying that we want maximum likelihood to be our estimator uh, maximum likelihood is the default, so you don't necessarily need to specify it, but I wrote it out here just so you can see what it would be like if you were to write out the estimator and if you potentially wanted to change it to something else. 
the type that we are doing. We're doing exploratory factor analysis. And then the numbers after it is telling us the minimum and the maximum number of factors that we want. So in this case, we just want a three factor solution. But if you wanted to request a one, two, and three factor solution, you can do one, three here. And for our rotation method, we are using GeoMin. Um, it is the default in M plus. However, M plus offers 27 different options for rotations. Um, so to, to do that, it would be rotation equals whatever rotation you wanted. Um, so that's one way you can change it within the analysis command. And we're also including plots here. So plot type two, and this is gonna provide us with a screen plot um, for our factor analysis. So we are going to run this. And here we have our output. As before, the beginning is just a reiteration of the code that we used. Input terminated normally, which means we have no issues. We have a summary of the sample that we used, the number of observations, number of variables. Here in this summary of analysis is gonna tell us the estimation method, the rotation we used, and whether or not that was an oblique or orthogonal rotation in which case it is an oblique rotation. It's gonna tell you if you have any missing data patterns and then proportion of the data that you have, some sample statistics before going into the results of your factor analysis. So the first thing it's gonna provide you is the eigenvalues for your factor analysis. And then it's going to provide you with some model fit information. As we can see here, the RSCA is pretty good. Same with the CFI. And then it's going to give us our factor loadings. So like the, the items that loaded on factor one, two, and three. Unlike SPSS, you can't suppress small um, factor loadings, but they are loaded based on size. So um, variables with high loadings are located first, with uh, variables with low factor loadings located at the, closer to the bottom. And because this is an oblique rotation, it has the correlation between each, the correlation between the factors. M plus will also provide the estimated residuals, standard errors, standard error of the residuals, and all the way down at the bottom, we have the factor structure, which is the correlation between each item and the particular factor. To get our screen plot, we just go up to the little line graph up here at the top to view plots. It'll ask us which plot we want. In this case, there's only one. And then it will provide us with the screen plot. So that is the basics of running a factor analysis in M+. So we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint and we're gonna go through some additional resources and pitfalls that you might run into when running M plus code. Here are several common errors or warnings that you might run into when writing M plus code. The first is just telling you that your variable names are longer than eight characters and only the first eight characters are gonna be used. If this is an issue, go back to your input file and shorten the variable names so they're less than eight characters long. The second warning is telling you that your input line is longer than 90 characters, so some of your code can be truncated. An easy fix for this would be to go back to your input file and move part of your code to a separate line so that M plus is able to read all of it. The last warning, the command that all variables are uncorrelated from all other variables, can occur when you have some variables in your use variable statement that you did not specify a relationship with in your model statement. The way to fix this would be to go back to your use variable statement and make sure all of the variables there are located in your model statement. The best case is a warning that the 
the estimation terminated normally indicated that there's no warnings in your code. However, there's several things that can stop your code from running. So if this occurs, you should check some of the following. First, check that all the semicolons are included at the end of each line, and that the correct variables are specified in your use variable command. Also double check that the location of your data has been specified correctly and is in the correct folder. Also double check spelling of your variables, make sure the variable names are in the correct order, and that all your missing data has, is coded correctly. It's important to note that the warnings will not stop the code from running, but the lack of semicolons, misspelled words, and issues with data locations will all stop your code from running. There are also several resources that you can use as you move forward with M+. The first is statmodel.com. This was developed by the creators of M+, and contains multiple examples and walkthroughs. It also contains a detailed guide of all possible segments of code that you can potentially use in M+. Also, as previously stated, the STATS IDRE UCLA website contains a lot of annotated output and examples that you can use for M+. All of these examples are also located on the SAM Lab website that you can use as you move forward. Thank you so much for attending this workshop. If you have any other questions, please check out the resources on our webpage or shoot us an email.